Sifu Raphael is the founder and host of Coaching Call, Heroes Rising, The Seer Show, and New Tip Daily. He works with individuals, groups, and businesses and helps them find clarity, purpose, and understanding of who they really are in business and personal life. Sifu Raphael has used his skills to develop a variety of multifaceted businesses in the martial arts and fitness industries. He owns and operates a 10,000 square foot martial arts and fitness facility in New York. Jose Escobar is an award-winning, nationally recognized personal development speaker, published author, and sales professional. He leads compelling, high-level communities consisting of entrepreneurs and advanced leaders through his two business models, the Entrepreneur's Bookshelf and the Connected Leaders Academy. He is also the co-host of Heroes Rising. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on Heroes Rising today. How are you? I'm doing oh, great. Man. Thank you for having us. Great. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Let, let's have some fun today. We, we are definitely all entrepreneurs. Everybody here loves business as much as me, probably. Um, maybe <laughs> even more. We'll find out. So I, I want to start um, by saying, Rick, thank you so much for being my co-host today. You are definitely stepping it up. But what I want to do is before we go on, Jose Escobar could not be here, but he is a sponsor in the show. So I want to show his real his clip really quick and then we can get started. So here's Jose. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe a community of entrepreneurs all over the world, globally, all across the country, high performers, titans of industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow personally and professionally, scale your influence, develop your skill sets, move the needle in your business, more clients, more money, more profit, the bottom line, and of course, grow your circle and your network like never before, this is where you wanna be. Join the Connected Leaders Academy today. We are scaling massively, we want to welcome you in. Check me out on Instagram and on Facebook, the at symbol JASCO25. We look forward to having you join us. Take care. Wow, great stuff. Great guy. But, you know, I have another great guy who stepped up today. So, Rick, Master Rick Rando, thank you again thank you. for being here with us, my friend. It's my pleasure, sir. Thanks for having me back yet again. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I love you, man. You know that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. The Let, feeling's mutual. Oh, uh, there you go. Nice. Let me introduce you to an amazing uh, person. I had the pleasure of getting to know him because he was also on my coaching call podcast. Enrica Costa Gonzalez has been served or has served as an executive businessman, veteran, and advocate board member to nonprofit as an administrator, speaker, mentor, coach, and avid volunteer. Over the past, listen to this, over the past 20 years, Enrique has held numerous executive advisory and senior leadership positions while serving in the U.S. Navy. Thank you, Enrique, for your service. I truly appreciate you, my friend. Oh, thank you. And, you know, through his education and training, he helped strengthen the chain of command, providing sound decision, support, and creating open communication at all levels, not just the lower levels, but all levels. Enrique has also helped to formulate and implement policies concerning morale, welfare, job satisfaction, discipline, and training of Navy and civilian personnel. Wow, you've done a lot, my friend. You have done a lot. I am so impressed by you as an individual, as a person, and most importantly, as a friend of mine. Well, I appreciate that, Rafael. Yeah, you could have summed it up by saying servant leader. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, so, I tell you, it, it's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, Rick, Joe, uh, Rafael, uh, an honor to speak about things that we love. Mm. <laughs> 
Let's hear it. I, I, I want to hear your, your ideas, your concepts, what you're sharing with us today. All right. Well, you mentioned earlier we love business. I am in the business of leadership development. Mm. And so today I want to talk about what I jokingly say and, and refer to as successful leadership. There's a lot of successful people, but there's a lot of leadership stuck in this area of success. And so I want to start off just by kind of giving you a, a little backdrop. When I first came in the military, I was part of a command and there was a senior enlisted. The person that is in charge of making sure that the enlisted complement and the junior officers are well-trained and able to do their work all the while being supported. And I noticed that this senior leader would uh, pick on this one young sailor. You know, he was uh, young, so he, did, he wasn't well-versed. And for some reason, the senior leader Every time this person got up in front of people to talk, he would berate him about his accent and would slowly, I could see it in the eyes and the face of this young sailor that every time he got up, he would, his light would diminish mm. every time, every time, and a little more every time. So the reason I tell you that is because that's, that's, that young sailor was me. That was me. And wow. so given that story and that backdrop, you know, I ask people all the time, you know, how does a true leader make you feel? You know, as a true leader, although they have the accolades, the rank and, and the structure and promotions, do they diminish your light every time you get up to bat? Do they diminish your light every time it's time for you to shine? And, uh, and so it's, it's a hard thing to, uh, to have gone through, but a great backdrop to what I'm talking about today, which is getting out of successful leadership. And maybe you're a person that is already in leadership, or maybe you're looking to become a leader, whether it's at home or school or wherever it may be, uh, and wherever you may find yourself. But the fact is that success requires someone else. You cannot get to success by yourself. There's no one. And the funny thing is, there's a lot of people that say, I'm a self-made. You may have made a thing by yourself, but the whole process includes someone else. And so it's, it's funny. And I always chuckle when I hear somebody say, I'm a self-made. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but in all of that, to say that in our leadership, there's this thing that I refer to as K factors and K factors is that K that's stuck in that success, right? <laughs> right in the middle. It's stuck in the middle and you don't know that it's even there, but the people around you are well aware that it is. And it shows up to hamper your true success. So I want to introduce you to these K factors and the K factors represent uh, internal struggles or any moral, ethical or lawless challenges that erode our leadership and make their way into our ability to produce success or even get to those achievements that we want so bad. And the fact is that we are the source of those K factors. So obviously this is something that you have to dig in deep and find it. And, be, and have some honest conversations with yourself in order to identify these areas and deal with them before they show up in front of some other people. And the first factor is you. The first K factor is you. You are the main actor in the play of your life. And K factors have been brewing up ever since you was born. Once you can verbalize a word, K factors already started playing because what happens is that um, through exposure to other people, they start seeping. As a child, you're growing and you're learning from others. And usually these K factors represent some in, uh, inadequacy in someone else and they just pass it on. K factors are subtle but deadly in action and do not produce immediate repercussions. So you may not see the effect right off the bat, but they grow in us. Your ability to execute success starts with you. Now, 
it could be a lazy way of handling issues or maybe some indifference towards tasks at hand or maybe a lack of motivation towards certain things. And we all have K factors, but the key is to identify these areas in our lives in private. And hopefully you have the opportunity because sometimes it's in public uh, and have an, an honest exploration as to what it is that uh, it, uh, it's become such an obstacle. Uh, take a look at yourself, take a good look at yourself and address those K factors and those areas before, you know, before it becomes an issue. The second area that K factors comes to play is in our talent. Uh, we all have individual talents. We all have individual gifts. K factors come to make sure that you cannot execute, right? And so it takes us investigating our toolbox, right? Everybody says, hey, what do you have in your toolbox? It's time to investigate what it is that you have in there because oftentimes the tools that we have, although they can be used to do a thing, like, for instance, I remember my father <laughs> taking his shoe, his hard shoe, and he was trying to knock this nail in the wall. I said, well, you know, that, that was funny, but that's not what a shoe is for. And sometimes because we can use something for a particular task, although it may not be the right tool, we are, are okay with just going on. And so talent requires many dedicated hours and practices and execution uh, to stand out from the rest. We all want to stand out from the rest. You have to put in the time. And I know, Rafael, uh, you know, in your trade and my shots, you know, you have to put in work if you want to get the results that you want. And so we must investigate in honing our crafts and getting better with time. And I encourage everyone listening to dig into their toolbox to see what you have at your disposal, lay them out, uh, and for the things that you don't have, learn to collaborate. Learn to lean on someone else and their talents for the things that you are missing. Um, K factors come to play when you think you you can get by. Right? If you can get by with things and you're comfortable, K factors already start to take a toll on you. The third thing is timing. And we know how important timing is. Timing is something that we do not control, though. And many of us have hit or missed in the attempts of managing time. And we know how easily that escapes us. So K factors in time, they derail your attempt at time management uh, through the what we call time set. Uh, let's say the internet, the television, social media. Right? These are all time sappers. And we're all given the same amount of time, but we do not handle it the same. So take a moment and look at how you're handling time and how do you waste it? Because that is, if you're wasting it, K-Factors has already started to take a toll. The next area is your environment. Now, my mom used to tell me, hey, tell me who you're with and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> and and I, at first I was like, what do you mean? But now I know as you grow that you are the sum result of the people that you're around. And usually those things are not looked after. And environment is a critical area in, in leadership that you must be aware of. And so if, there, if there's anything that K-Factors do best, at it, it roams around for suitable environments. And it strategically inserts itself into the most suitable settings, bustling with people, right? Because people take, like I mentioned earlier, they take and they bring these K-Factors. Your environment is just as important to your success as any other element, especially when you're dealing with K factors. Now, let me give you an example. The water fountain, right? Conversations that go on in there. Uh, it's, it's not a problem. The issue arises when the conversation takes a certain tone or does not promote good order, which often off ramps you into areas that leaders should not be in. And you may remember something not being right in the conversation, that feeling in your stomach or the conversation just going sideways. You've just identified the K factor has shown up. And the decision you take after you realize it's there will determine the impact on your leadership ability and often reputation. 
The next one is mission. Now, for a military man, mission was a common thing. It's not so much in, in the civilian world, but mission was just a task, right? And K-Factors uh, will show up to do a thing on your mission. And we all endeavor to find our purpose as leaders, help others find theirs. And that's one of our goals. And we try to get to the purpose by tying mission uh, to our lives that lead us to the ultimate result. And we create mission statements. And I'm sure that every company you've been at has some variation of it uh, that guide us on the journey and give us course corrections along the way to success. And K factors love to insert themselves in your mission statements by adding daily routine activities that do not feed your mission goals. And so we're allowing these things to just seep in and they show up as activities that seem like they could help, but never end up supporting the mission. And lastly, results. Everybody wants results, right? And in business, we just want results. And the military would say, no excuses, just results. <laughs> Keep all that other stuff away. And how can you have all things in order and still fail? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we put a lot of effort into what we do and they fall flat on their face. And you're like, how in the world did this happen? I, everything was right. K factor showed up. And now you got to go digging, right? K factors like to surprise you, if anything. It reveals themselves in our results. And we hurry to find, you know, why this could happen or who is responsible, you know, why us a lot of times. Hey, what happened? <laughs> what can you do when K factors manage to have their way with you? Choose to look once again at yourself. Employ mm -hmm. laughter. If there's anything that I encourage is not to be so serious. <laughs> employ laughter. Employ, you know, sometimes I laugh at myself, um, you know, and ask yourself, what can I learn from this moment, you know, to help me to get back on track? All things will not be perfect. Learn how to laugh and get on with life. It will be smoother in the long run. And I believe yesterday was like national uh, let it go day or something like that. And I was like loving it. Sometimes you just got to let it go. And so what I would like folks to get out of all this that I've said is that it, it bring you to this, right? If you can say truth be told, you know, this is an area that K factors has seeped into my life and it does not represent the leader that I want to be. Mm. And if you can get to that point with all that I said, I think you'll start down the journey of success and not success. I love it. I love it. Great, great stuff. Wow. So much to think about. You know, I, I love the story about your dad with the shoe. Yeah, me too. <laughs> because so many people are using the wrong tool. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and, you know, as a carpenter myself, I, I have a workshop as well. There are so many different hammers to use. There's so many different tools. But when you use the right one, man, wow. it's huge. And then, you know, your mom said, my mom said something similar. She said, show me who you are with mm. and I'll tell you who you are. Mm. Right? Very similar. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Great, great information. Always, you always inspire me, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Always inspire me. And here's another person that is like crazy uh, as, as inspiring me, right? So Master Rick Rando is the owner and president of Kickmasters Karate School. And, you know, he is the head facilitator. Also, He's at randospeaks.com. He's the co-host of the Victory Couch podcast and the CEO of Andron Enterprises. As a traditional mar martial artist, a Taekwondo practitioner, not for a few years, but for 35 years. Wow. wow. I got to tell you, buddy, great, great stuff. Give me one second. Things are moving on my end over here, so... I, my computer's going ballistic. And <laughs> as you guys know, 
it went ballistic earlier. So it's asking me to save things. So I'm saving things because it must be Rick who's wanting me to save the fact that he's been doing this for 35 years. Mm -hmm. He owns one, one of the largest open space martial arts schools in the country. He's currently a seventh degree black belt. I know you, you're doing a marathon. We're going to have to talk about that. Did you finish it? How did it go? All these things. I have a thousand questions for you. He is endorsed by the legend. If you know martial arts, you know Grandmaster Bill Superfoot Wallace. He is a keynote speaker. Rick Rando has conducted thousands of demonstrations and presentations in the education system and in the business community at large. He's been the keynote speaker, featured speaker at thousands of events and has worked with countless distinguished companies such as Hunter Douglas, the Boy Scouts, Columbia, Gas, Nysource, Flagship Rehab. Listen, I can go on for days, Rick. Yeah, You've cut it. You've done so much. It's good. We're good. <laughs> let, let me tell you, this gentleman is definitely someone you want to follow. Rick, help us out, my friend. You Thank are you. Well, amazing. I appreciate that. I, I sent, the, sent the bio. I gave you the long edition, so you didn't have to read all of that. Um, no, no, no. But... You know what? I, I was enjoying it. Oh, thank you. I wasn't doing it for you. I was doing it for me, man. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for having me here today. And today I'm going to be very brief because today I'm talking about one thing and one thing only. I'm talking about attitude. Mm. Uh, you know, I think all of us are set up for success, but very few of us tap into that thing that we have inside of us and have the proper attitude at the proper time. I mean, think about it. How many times are we late for something and we're mad at the red light and we're mad that the person in front of us is going so slow and we're mad that, you know, the, this person cut us off and we forgot, we forgot that we're blessed to drive and we have two good arms and two good legs and a healthy car and a full tank of gas. And sometimes it just takes a little perspective to sort of create the proper attitude that we have to win. And uh, I'm going to give you just a couple things today. Uh, the very first thing is an attitude of gratitude, having mm. that attitude of gratefulness that we get to do things and instead of have to do things. So I have two kids. Uh, one's a preteen. Another one's an eight year old. And instead of waking up and saying, hey, we have to go to school today, right? We always wake up and say, hey, we get to go to school today. And just that one little word from have to to get to sort of changes the context of our attitude before we approach something. So that attitude of, of gratefulness that we get to do things, we get to experience things, we get to wash dishes because we had a great meal. We get to do laundry because we have amazing clothes. We get to get in the car and drive to grandma's house because guess what? We have a grandma. So sometimes the have tos get in the way of the get tos and uh, it puts us in the wrong state of mind. So you talked about a marathon, I actually ran a marathon over the weekend. It was a full marathon. Uh, my legs are still um, recovering. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it is, uh, I think it's my second full marathon. I think my seventh or eighth, you know, regular marathon. And uh, on my very first full marathon, um, you know, I'm running, it was in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm right around mile number 19. And, you know, my legs are seizing up and, you know, I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. I trained, or at least I thought I did, uh, to go ahead and go the full 26, but my body was sort of shutting down. And, uh, you know, I had salt pellets and the whole thing. If you're a runner, you know, there are a lot of tricks to go ahead and get you through. But right around mile, mile 19, my, my legs were just, were just done. And I started walking. I started slowing down. It was extremely hot that day, would explain the, uh, the dehydration and the cramping. But, uh, you know, my, my earbuds started making this weird sound. It sounded like this. And I kind of, I tap them and try to figure out like what's going on, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a music man. I like to, I like to listen. And the whole time I'm just getting angry. You know, my music's not working. My legs hurt. You know, I remember telling my wife before this process started that I'm going to finish and it's going to be great. And she said, well, why do you want to run a marathon? And I said, because it's something I feel like I need to do. And, and she said, well, don't you know how much your legs are going to hurt? Don't you know how much time you're going to spend away from us as a family and your business? Don't you know how 
hard it's going to be, how much of a sacrifice this is going to be. And I said, I realize all that, but you on my side, you know, I don't think we can fail. And in that moment at 19 miles, when everything's failing, the sound is getting louder. And I'm tapping my earbuds and I'm just trying to figure out what that sound is. And over my right shoulder comes this guy that goes flying past me and he doesn't have any legs. And the sound that I heard was his prosthetic metal legs hitting the pavement. And I get goosebumps when I think back to that moment. And, you know, I can't help but think the day that he told his wife, hey, I want to run a marathon. And she probably said the same thing my wife said. Well, why would you want to do that? Don't you know how much pain you're going to be in? Don't you know how much of a sacrifice it's going to be? In that moment, I realized that I got to run and I got to finish and I got to go ahead and run that last seven miles because I have two fantastic working, although be it sore legs, but I have two legs. And that gentleman that just passed me like I was standing still because I virtually was, would trade places with me in just a second. That attitude of gratefulness is something that we have to be very, very mindful of and very, very purposely driven to exude. The second attitude is humility. Mm -hmm. You know, Enrique said earlier, self-made man. You know, to me, when somebody says I'm a self-made man, I hear self-centered man, self-centered person. Because no one has done anything of significance without the help of other people. No one in the history of mankind, because somebody need to change your diapers. Okay. At some point you couldn't drive. <laughs> At some point, somebody had to pay for college. At some point, you needed help from a spouse, a child, a parent, a neighbor, a friend. Somebody poured into you. And that's why having that attitude of humility, where it's we instead of me. I think is super important. And I think it's important to go ahead and also realize that there are people and factors and humans or God himself in your life that are, that's pouring into you. And we need to go ahead and take a second, stop, acknowledge that and be humble enough to admit that we didn't do it by ourselves. You know, Enrique made, made a lot of great points about being self, um, so doing a self-assessment and see where you are and who you are, but also do we do a self-assessment and see what we have? What are our strengths and why are they our strengths? Who makes us strong? Who pours into us? And are we giving those people or those things, those entities enough credit? Do we call up our friends and say, hey, man, thank you for being in my life. I appreciate that. As guys, that's really hard for us. You know, ladies mm -hmm. kind of do that all the time. But as dudes, we're 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 kind of not made that way. We don't call up our friend and say, hey, I'm thankful for you. How can I pray for you today? But we need to start and we need to do it. We need to do it daily. The last attitude that I have today is responsibility. Responsibility. When we mess up, do we raise our hand and do we say, yep, it was me. Help me get better. Or do we say it was her she should know better. We all mess up, all of us. You know, myself, I, I mess up daily. I'm a dad. There's no handbook on how to be the perfect dad and to be, be the perfect spouse. But you know what? When you make a mistake, you own it and you learn from it and you move on from it. Showing yourself grace, obviously asking for, for, for forgiveness and making amends. But having that attitude of responsibility where it's we, not he. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I want to get better. I'm going to give you a bonus one. And actually, before we started, um, Enrique actually said it, and I believe Joe uh, sort of commented as well, of having that uh, servant leadership. How do we serve our fellow humans? And I just want to give you a quick example. I was at Lowe's not too long ago with my son. There was a lady in front of me. She was waiting to check out, and she was paying with change. And her change purse felt it fell all over the floor. Now, this is the middle of Lowe's. This lady's probably in her you know mid-60s. She's paying with change, and her change just went everywhere. Boom. The two kids behind me were college students. You know, They're looking for the Ikea furniture or whatever to put together. And they just stood there, and they started laughing. They elbowed each other and said, look at this lady. What my son and I did was we immediately got on our hands and knees and helped her pick up her change. Now, I don't need to tell you that because I need a pat on the back. I don't need to tell you that to say, hey, look at me. Look what I did. I'm just saying 
How often do we let those experiences where we can help or serve or take care of someone or go above and beyond, we let them, we sort of fritter, fritter them away because we're engaged on social media or we're afraid that we want to, we're going to look bad or that it will, will, we might get dirty or, you know, that might be too hard. You know, I challenge each and every one of you listening today to check your attitude. What kind of attitude do you have? Are you gracious? Are you humble? Are you a servant leader where you're looking to serve your people, serve, serve your people, go out of your way to help. You know, I, you know, there's a great book by Simon Sinek. It's called uh, leaders eat last great book. If you haven't checked that out. And basically uh, I saw this in full effect when I got a chance to go to a Chick-fil-A leadership event, I was there with Mark, um, Mark Miller. He's a higher up in the Chick-fil-A organization. They were honoring him with a special commemorative cake. And there was probably like 500 people there at this particular event. And they brought out this cake and it said, congratulations, 25 years with the, with the company, something like that. Had candles. He blew it out and he had just finished speaking. And you know what that man did? That man went back and he cut cake and he served every single human in line with that cake before he ate his. And to me, that is the ultimate sign of someone that has that attitude of service and that, um, that humble spirit. So if at any part... Uh, you've clicked in and you chimed in here and you hear these great speakers speak. You know, my portion is just watch the attitude, however it is. You know, be grateful. You know, we have a snow day here. I get to spend a day with my kids. They're right over there in the other room. And I could look at it like, oh, my gosh, my kids are here. It's be quiet. Don't come upstairs. It's going to be right. But you know what? As soon as we're done, I get to hang out. I get to I get to have fun. I get to read. I get to paint toenails and all that other good stuff <laughs> I get to instead of have to. So just challenge you in that way. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me, Sifu. I appreciate you. Oh, my gosh. Great, great uh, information. And by the, by the way, you have a great attitude. Mm -hmm. We try. I mean, I think we all can. We just, we, just have to, we just have to practice it, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me introduce Joe here, okay? Sure, go for and, it. And uh, Joe created a successful real estate career beginning in the immediate aftermath of the recession of 2009 which we all have been there and done that. Having a job in, 20, in 2009 was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, his businesses have created revenue from properties in the vast array of methods. Some more common ways to create revenue are by performing landlord services, selling mm -hmm. investment properties to other investors, and renovating for sale properties. Uh, over the years, he has seen people live and work from a wider range of vantage points. Currently, he operates rentals, flips, rents to own, and networking companies on a professional level. Outside of the professional world, he's a married man with a newly born son. Mm -hmm. you know, to his elbows and diaper and baby, baby bonnet. Uh, but in 2017, along with his father, Boniface Hicks, he created the podcast Father and Joe. The goal of that podcast is to bring individuals closer to God. So, Joe, thank you so much for being here. Fantastic. You're going to speak right to my soul. I know it. Well, yeah, so thank you for having me. And I think that the the thread, that he really hasn't been said, but it's gone between both Rick's and Enrique's conversations is a need to have vulnerability. You know, at the end of the day, that is really what we have to be able to look inside ourselves, as Enrique was saying, to acknowledge truly where we're at and what our limitations are. And then likewise with our attitudes, you know, what is holding us back? And it's that vulnerability that adds us to open up. And that's a challenge for any individual out there. And what I'm going to give here is four things that we all can implement into our lives today that will make us a better leader in all capacities. Yes, it'll make us have a better work culture. It'll make us better at sales. But it also will bring up every other relationship that we have within our lives. And you guys both hit upon it so beautifully that relationships are truly what we need to be successful. There is no self-made man. It's all throughout the relationships in which we have with others. And I want to spotlight four things that we all can do to make ourselves better at that. And the four things going very quickly through them are prudence, justice, courage, and humility, um, as already stated. So what I mean by prudence is that you need to have a passion and a knowledge about something. If you're a leader of people, it needs to be about your specific thing you're leading them on. So you need to know what your company is all about and what your product you're trying to sell is. But even in the rest of your capacity of life, it doesn't matter whether it's Harry or Jets or Harry Potter. You need to have 
a knowledge and a passion about it. Because within that knowledge and passion will instinctually come confidence. And we as a social species find confidence to be one of the very few universally attractive things across all cultures and every person on this planet. The second thing that I want to focus upon is courage. And Enrique kind of brought it up a little bit here. When you get that feeling that's inside of you, do you have the ability to get it out of you? And have you created an environment in your workplace where that becomes comfortable? You know, we hear from Enrique's story in the beginning here about how he was afraid to come up and really truly communicate because he was getting put down upon every time he wanted to contribute something of greatness. Unfortunately, not every person is as strong as him and that they power away eventually disappear. And do we want to have our relationships around us be surrounded by people who become diminished? and not want to be around us? Or do we want to have relationships that are built up and stronger and where every person contributes? And where vulnerability ties into this is when we fear that feeling of getting it out, it might come out stuttery or weird or awkward, but that's okay. That's part of the process of recognizing I'm a person going through the same world as the rest of you. We all have problems and difficulties, but I want to communicate this because it's important to me. It's a feeling that's coming inside of me that I need to be able to share. And what the most successful businesses find is that that pathway of being allowing every person involved to be able to share the feelings opens up more channels to victory than any other math. Because as the owner or the manager, you'll know your space in your company, but there's no way you'll know every single square inch of it. And the more you allow conversation to honestly go through and to choose what we can act upon, you will find pathways to better victory. That's true for your business. That's true for your sales environment. And that's true for every single relationship you have. Just imagine if someone next to you was so afraid to tell you what was really going on inside them. Now, if that was an important relationship to you, such as your marriage, and she won't tell you what's important to you, your marriage will fail because you won't be able to truly connect. And having that courage and inviting other people to have that courage with you to say what is truly inside you is how you create pathways to victory. And it's incredibly essential, but it requires vulnerability to say, hey, I might not know all the answers. There's humility involved there as well. And humility is the third one here. Humility is harder because it's not an all in. We can go all in and just learn more and more and become more passionate and more knowledgeable about stuff. We can go all in and get all of our feelings out and try to figure out how to do this. But humility is a balancing act. Humility is not, I am the greatest person of all time. You need to listen to every single word I say. And if you don't do it, I will smash you. (laughs) Nor is it, I am so small and insignificant that I don't matter. Humility is knowing your place that you not the biggest, nor are you the smallest. And as Mr. Rando was saying, we're all underneath the umbrella of God. So when it comes push to shove, we never will be the biggest and the greatest. We all will be in our appropriate place. And having a fostered attitude of that will get us to a situation where people around us become more comfortable communicating and sharing important things with us and having us grow. And the final one that I'm going to end today's conversation on the four things that we can implement is justice. And justice in this context is from everything else I was saying about being in a relationship. Am I with this person because I'm going to get some status rub off? Did I hire them because it's going to look good in a press conference or in a magazine article? Or did I hire this person because they were the absolute best person that I could get given the resources I wanted to spend on this position? Because that's what we're all truly strive to do in the professional world. Take everything outside. Based upon the resources we want to spend this position, is this the best person for it? And in our personal lives, am I trying to encircle myself, put my friends around me because I'm going to get some type of status rub off? 
or are they genuinely the people I want to be around? Going back to what Enrique said in the beginning, we are who we surround ourselves with. What is that vehicle in which we choose to put around us? And that really is where justice is applicable here. So I thank everyone for, for giving me a time here, especially with these two great speakers here before me. And I really do hope that you guys take these four things and implement them in their lives. Become passionate and knowledgeable about something. Learn how to speak up and have courage within your body and your soul. Be humble in every truest sense of the world and choose the people around you based upon their merit and no other artificial factor. So again, I thank you all for letting me be here. And Raphael, if you want to take the stage. Oh my gosh. Great, great. Oh, I'm so, uh, how can I say it, blessed that I have these three gentlemen joining me today who are not only imparting knowledge upon all of you, but you guys touched upon me. So thank you so much. And I want to also clarify for, for people, when it, your podcast, it says Father and Joe, it's not actually your dad. It's a priest, right? Yes, that's right. It's a Catholic priest, yes. <laughs> So I want to clarify that because, I mean, how cool would it be if I could do a podcast? With, I mean, he's not around anymore. But if we could do a podcast with our own dad or our own family member, I mean, wow. I mean, wait a minute. I think somebody here does do it with their own family member. Right? That's right. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do the Victory Couch with my wife. It is a relationship podcast podcast. <clears throat> Where uh, the Victory Couch, it's uh, it's a real place. It's our couch in our living room. <laughs> awesome. And the couch is uh, where we get real about our our well, our victories, our defeats, our challenges, our struggles. And uh, yeah, my wife is very different than me. Uh, we we you, we we call it the right side of the couch, the left side of the couch, and uh, the left side of the couch. You know, puts out his color. You know, I already have my clothes laid out for what I'm going to wear tomorrow. You know. The, the right side of the couch, you know, she drives a Jeep and she's, you know, she's a little more easygoing, you know, so <laughs> the two of us come together and uh, yeah, we've, um, we've been, we're very successful with that podcast. We've, we've touched and I think spoken to a lot of people. So, and I think that was my fault, Joe. I, I said with your father. So I meant yeah. with father. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, that's all right. I, I, which box I gave people is different. You know, now I'm actually, I mean, I, I do all that still, but now I'm actually helping people grow in their sales positions and grow in their businesses. Because I do believe, just as you said, you're having vulnerability on your couch with your wife or else you wouldn't have real conversations. I, I believe that salespeople are the people who will heal this world. And the sales industry is what will do it because it will overcome all of the problems that are out there in the most efficient fashion. And that's really what, what, what my life is now at Elite Business Conversations, is helping people become better at sales and helping people really get through those hurdles that come both in a sales career and in a business and be able to step up to the next level to be able to continue to help heal this world, which all salespeople will do. Mm, that's awesome. That's well, you got to have doers and you got to have people that facilitate, you know, the doing and, you mm -hmm. know, sales, you know, up until a couple of years ago was just a dirty word. People didn't <sighs> like it. You don't want to be in sales, but sales is, is what makes the world go round. Um, right? Absolutely. And so many industry is still set with how they were doing it in the fifties and the sixties. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's just, this is the culture I was brought up in. It was horrible. This is really the story that, that your boss was going through Enrique. I'm sorry. I forgot his rank that you told us on the story, but that's what it was. Life sucked for me. Life's going to suck for you. And you're going to put mm -hmm. high pressure on your sales. And if they don't like it too bad, you put pressure on them. Then you find someone else who eventually will give into your anger, and frustration and anxiety. And that's what life is. And that's what most salespeople have dealt with. And the reality is, is that when you give a nurturing relationship solution, everything will work out. Mm -hmm. And that's really what, what I teach and, and what I bring out. And um, yeah, I hope that everyone gets it. I mean, the, the, that's this is how we'll heal the world is through human relationships. And yeah. sales are the best venue to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Service through the sale. That's exactly. <laughs> you know, we're, right? I'm giving you something equal. Therefore, we are serving each other. Mm -hmm. and, and, exactly. and that's, I think, the thing that really is the dynamic that most salespeople failed at is, is they were trying to take from their buyer rather than to truly give at an equal mm. par. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's time for the, for, the, for the man himself. It's time for Sifu. So uh, Sifu Raphael is the founder of Heroes Rising, which 
uh, he's got a ton of shows here. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been on, I think I've been on all of them. I'm pretty sure he's a fitness professional solutions expert, executive coach and head instructor at max martial arts and fitness in New York personal friend of mine forever. Sifu Raphael's purpose is to unite like-minded individuals to create new possibilities and impact the world we live in. Sifu Raphael believes that we can all change the world. Most importantly, we need to start with ourselves so we can help others. Sifu, yeah. close us out today. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. You know, yes, one of the things that you guys all touched upon is time. And that's what I want to talk about. Find the time. Find the time to be grateful. Find the time to pray. Find the time to, to make the sale. But to make the sale that's going to impact someone, not just you, right? So when we learn to find the time, the most important time I think we need to find is that selfish hour. The hour time right? Rick, you were alone in your marathon. But were you? No, I wasn't. I, let me just tell you something right now. Um, the only reason I finished this marathon over the weekend was through God's grace. Let me just, I'm just going to put it out there right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you are in your faith journey, but I will just tell you that I had lost about 10 pounds the week before my run. I had plantar fasciitis I had uh, that I've been dealing with in both feet. I had mm -hmm. left knee pain. It was a lot warmer than anticipated. So my body was completely diminished by about mile nine. And wow. so I, I wasn't alone. There's no I, way I, I could have finished with in my own personal strength. Um, and I am humble enough to admit that I did not do it by myself. My beautiful wife was of... Uh, Oh my gosh, we've been married 17 years, 18 years, 18 years. She's, you know, seeing me on the course and, you know, she's helping me through, but I'm just, I'm telling you right now, um, God pulled me through that run over the weekend. hundred percent. No I, doubt. I know that. That's why I said what I said, because you find the time to worship, if you will, right? And and I think that all of us here are, are men of faith. And I can hear it in your voices. I can hear it in, in your passion. Because there is an amazing grace, if we will, if we learn to accept it. And Joe talked about that. We're not the greatest. We could never be. But we are in awe of the greatest, right? So when we think about finding time, what time do you give yourself? One of the things that I always say is, if God created us in his image, then why are we not acting that way? Why are we not taking the time to take care of this amazing body that he's given us, this amazing mind that he's given us, mm -hmm. we need to be able to take that time, whether it's in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. Meditation could be part of it. Prayer should be part of it. But we all have different religions, different races, whatever it is you believe in. Here's the funny thing. Atheists still believe in something. So there is belief. So when you find the time, you need to find the time for you first. So you have to be selfish. You have to take that time to become more, to become great. You did not become who you are, Enrique, in the military if you stayed cowarding with that gentleman coming at you yeah maybe you could have you could not have spoken back at him because there would have been repercussions but internally you did the work to be able to survive that maybe he was misguided he didn't have the time that he needed to take to understand the value that you brought so for me in business 
it's finding the time, no matter who works for you, no matter how low their job is, if somebody, if you hire somebody to clean the bathrooms, or if you, if you hire somebody to do your sales, or if you hire somebody to show for you around, if you hire somebody to, you know, to train you, to train your mind, we should treat everyone with utmost respect. Find a time to give them time to give them your time. That is the most precious thing you have when you can give someone your time. Find the time. So my talk right now is all about finding the time to empower other people because the more you empower others, mm -hmm. they will be the ones who help you rise. Without them, and you guys all said it, every one of you, without them, what are we, right? Rick, you said it, somebody, somebody changed your diaper, somebody helped you along, a neighbor, a friend, whatever it is, but they took their time. So when someone asks for help, this is the one that really gets me when somebody says, hey, can I, can I get some help? And then you hear someone else say, yeah, sure. What are you gonna do for me? Man, that is not being helpful. That is being one-sided. So don't ever, ever help anyone if you're looking for something in return. The gift of helping is your return. That is so valuable to me. This is why every time I talk to Rick, he always says to me, and I love this about him, hey, buddy, how can I help you today? Man, but here's the thing. He's genuine about it. He's not just saying it because it's something that's going to make him look cool. He's saying it because he means it. Same thing with all of you guys. You all have been on my show, right? And you came and you delivered and delivered and delivered. And you never said to me, what are you doing for me, Raphael? No, you just came and you gave and you gave and you gave. And that's what my shows are about. People who are givers, people who give their time. That's a commodity that you can never get back. Once you give your time. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here and giving your time. You found the time to come here today and share. Your words are beautiful. What you have said can change one person's life. You have served big. You have served him. So thank you for being amazing leaders, for being amazing coaches, for imparting your knowledge on other people. One of the other things I always say is, if you have knowledge, and you don't share it, that is just a terrible thing. So I always ask this question. Gentlemen, what is this cemetery full of? Silence. That it is. What else? A lot, a lot of hopes and dreams that were never yes. fulfilled. Yes. A lot of potential and impetus that were never initiated. Exactly right. And a lot of people will always say to me, dead bodies. Maybe you're right too. <laughs> Decomposed bodies as well. And bugs and plants and all these things. But look, have you ever been to a cemetery and there's grass growing, even though there's dead things under it? There is, because there's always an opportunity for growth. If you ever go to the cemetery and you're visiting a loved one and you look at the grave next to it, how much effort would it take for you if, if there was garbage around it just to clean it up? It wouldn't take much. And that's putting your time and the love, not only for the person that you went to visit, the memory of that person, but in the world. Because when someone else may see 
what you do that you took your time. And today all I'm talking about is time because that's all we have, right? What can you do with your time in this world? How can you impact the world? Listen, somebody said to me recently, when you go to the other side, none of us have been to the other side, so we don't know. Are there ATMs there? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe there is. I don't know. I haven't been there. But you can't really take the material things with you. But if you showed up to the pearly gates, I think one of the questions that may be asked of you, what did you do with the time that we gave you? How? Did you use it? So, gentlemen, I am beyond thrilled that you took the time today to be here with me. I love every one of you guys. And you know what? One of the things that people are always terrified of is telling another man, I love you. That should not be. Because we are all brothers and sisters and fathers, and children, right? We're all children of God. So thank you, gentlemen. What, what can I say? How can I be of help to you, gentlemen, in any way? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be here. You know, it's, it, this is not one of those things I saw on my calendar to go off of what Rick was saying before that I had to do. This was something that I really felt glad to be able to be a part of. So mm -hmm. I thank you for, for again, extending the invitation to myself. And I'm sure that the, everyone else feels that same way because there's a lot of great content from, from all of you. And I thank you for letting me be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to share something with you guys. You may not know, but in the background, I have five different Facebook um, entities that I, that this show goes live to, all of them didn't go live. Why? Don't know. It said somehow they got deleted. And I'm like clicking and clicking and it's not working. Guess what? Maybe it wasn't the time for somebody to hear it now. But I'm going to take the video and put it up anyway. <laughs> so at least they will get to see it at another time. When we think about the impact that each one of you is making. We're all in different parts of the world. So, Enrique, where are you? I'm in uh, Orlando. Yes. And they're very lucky to have you, my friend. <laughs> and Rick, where are you? I'm in uh, Maryland. Like I said, kids have a snow day today, so it's a little, a little blustery outside. But uh, mm. yeah, Maryland, West, the mountains of Maryland, Western Maryland. There you go. And Joe? I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There we go. No snow there? No, it's weird. <laughs> we, I'm in New York. I'm in Long Island, New York. We've had the mildest winter. And I pray every day. And I'm thankful because I don't like cold. But I don't know why I'm here. Actually, I know because of my kids. But here's the thing. Wherever you are, Make the time to be grateful, right? Enrique, what are you doing differently today that you did yesterday? Actually, uh, similar to Rick, uh, we homeschool our kids. So mm. as soon as I'm done with this, we're watching Jedi movies and, <laughs> yeah. and Man all of this. <laughs> Actually, that's the first one we're watching. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Gentlemen, I got I to gotta tell you so much. Uh, I'm so grateful for you all. And Rick, thank you so much for stepping up. And, you know, one of the things I've always, uh, you know, I admire you as, as a human being, but also as a martial artist, you know, seventh degree is nothing to sneeze at. You are definitely a great martial artist. So thank you. Thank you, sir. I hope I did Jose proud. I'm sure he did. I know he's going to be, he's clapping. I know it. I can tell. But he's, he's traveling too. You know, Jose is such a busy individual that when I asked him to do the show, I said, Jose, you always sharpen your pencil. That's why I'm asking you. He goes, 
yeah, I can sharpen it a little bit more to be on this show. So <laughs> I'm glad that he, he said yes. But every so often, you know, he's going to be traveling. I may be traveling. So we may ask one of you gentlemen if you would even need to take my place for that one day. And we'll let you know for sure. Thanks again for having us, sir. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right, everybody. Have an amazing and blessed day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.